Preps.com. I'm Evan Wren, and this is the Big Country Preps Wednesday night podcast, our weekly look at the area athletic scene, what happened last week, and what's going on this week. I'm here with my partner, Dan Youngblood, via Zoom. And tonight, Dan, we've got a special guest. We've got Mitch Abels, who doubles as the football coach and basketball coach over at Holly, aside from his athletic director duties. Yeah, I think this is uh, maybe the only guest we've had uh, since we started this podcast uh, that that uh, we've talked to for multiple sports uh, as the coach of multiple sports uh, simultaneously. We've had, I know Coach Hugh Sandifer, uh, former Wiley coach, had coached both at the same time, but he was not doing that, obviously, at the time. So a really unique situation that uh, that's happening over at Holly. And the thing that's really neat is Abel's, uh, Coach Abel's is doing a great job with both teams. Uh, the, what he's done with the football program is – Dang near unprecedented the success he's had there, leading them to the state championship uh, last uh, last season, and then uh, the basketball program he's got them rolling too, has them undefeated in in district ten two a play a good district and and rolling potentially toward another district championship. So uh, yeah. it'll be going to be a lot of fun to talk to Coach Abel's about the success he's having, uh, and I, I'm interested to talk to him about some about his basketball background. We've we've talked to him a lot about. Uh, you know the football side of things over the years. So it's going to be fun to have a conversation that's maybe more basketball centered. All right, before we jump into this week's show, let's uh, thank a couple of our sponsors, beginning with For the Love of the Game Broadcasting, and our old friend Terry Slavens, owner of K-Lakes 93.5 FM out of Breckenridge, KATX 97.7 FM out of Eastland, Classic Country AM 1330 out of Graham, 94.7 FM KWKQ out of Graham, KRO 1430 AM out of Breck, and KWBY 98.5 FM out of Ranger. That's For the Love of the Game Broadcasting. Also, Rob Durham, sales consultant at Bear, Chevrolet Buick Cadillac up in Breckenridge. If you're in the market for a vehicle, new or used, give Rob a shout. He's one of the nicest guys you'll ever want to meet. Call him at 254-559-2266. That's Rob Durham up at Bear, Chevrolet Buick Cadillac in Breckenridge. Also, before we get going, uh, for those of you who enjoy our videos, please hit that subscribe button. And then after that, please hit the little bell so that you'll get notifications each and every time Big Country Preps comes up with a Wednesday night podcast. So please hit that subscription button, won't you please? We appreciate it. And with that, uh, it's about time to talk to Coach Mitch Abels, and it looks like he's about ready to join us. So let's go ahead and get him on. And joining us now, Holly Athletic Director and Head Football Coach, Head Basketball Coach, Mitch Abels. Coach, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, Coach, you guys are off to another good start uh, in hoops. Tell us about uh, what you guys are doing right. What's pleasing you about this ball club? Well, I think uh, defense has probably been the most surprised so far. Uh, you know, we not really the whole game yet. We hadn't played very good defense the whole game, but the last two, the last two halves of the last two ball games, we've had some great defensive play, and it's kind of helped us win some ball games. And coach, y'all are in an interesting situation, uh, and in a good one, obviously. That, that y'all's football program has had so much success that a lot of times y'all are getting off to late starts on the uh, to basketball season. Uh, just what is the challenge there in, in making that that quick turnaround and getting a lot of those same kids that are helping you in both sports uh, ready for for the for success on the hoop side? Oh well, you know anybody that's been through that that's played football and then go straight to basketball it takes you a while to get it's just a different type of conditioning and uh you know it always seems like it takes a while to to get there and you know uh, a lot of times when you first come in and start shooting that ball is not going to go in the hole very often when you first start and you know these kids just got to keep practicing and keep practicing and shooting and shooting and and getting into shape and uh thank goodness for uh Thank goodness for Christmas tournaments because we we went up to Lubbock this year and played uh, five games in a Christmas or four games in a Christmas tournament and that helped us get in a little better condition to head into district. So glad we had the opportunity to do that and it was good for us, good for our team. And uh, just with the success you've had on the football side, we've we've talked to you on several occasions, obviously uh, uh, about that sport and some influences and some background of that sport. I was just curious uh, about your basketball background. Can you just describe kind of uh, the, the background on that side? Well, you know, my ba- my dad coached basketball for 35 years, and that's kind of kind of what I wanted to do. You know, get when I was leaving high school to go to college, I actually went to Hardin Simmons to play basketball, and kind of the mindset that I was going to coach basketball just like my dad and you know, got involved with the football program and got around Coach Keeling and Coach Wardis and all those guys. And my my love kind of changed for uh, 
from basketball to football, but I guess that love also never left me. You know, uh, as an AD in a small school, you're going to be at everything anyway. And, uh, you know, the first time we had a situation where we didn't have a head coach, I was just like, well, I'm going to be there anyway, so I might as well be coaching them. And that, that's kind of where we are right now. Coach, obviously you still love basketball. You have a love for football. At the two-way level, uh, a guy that's coaching both is rare. Uh, you'll, you'll see it at the one-way level, at the six-man school uh, level, uh, fairly often. At the two-way level, it's it's starting to get pretty rare to see it. Um, is this part of the? I mean, is this? I mean, it, 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 you it got the best of both worlds at Holly. Is this one of the reasons that Holly appeals to you as much as it does? Oh, you know, I like it. You know, it's it's a small school. I really like my kids being in a small atmosphere just. To so they can play everything, you know, the bigger the school gets, the more kind of specialized you try to pull a kid to or not. But, uh, you know, it's been good. I grew up in a, it was a one a at the time I grew up in Perrin wit and played everything. I think I played six sports in high school. So it's good for these kids to, to be well-rounded and be able to play a lot of things, but you know, that's, just kind of the nature of the beast, especially as hard as it is to hire coaches nowadays. It makes it it makes it tough sometimes at the small school to to have a whole a complete staff, and it, you know, just when, when those staff and uh, vacancies don't get filled, somebody has to do it. And you may have just answered this, uh, mentioning your dad and, and uh, how long he coached. Uh, and we've talked in the past about Coach Keeling and Coach Wardis, who I see pretty frequently out at basketball games and football games now. Um, but who are some of the biggest coaching influences on you on the basketball side? Who are some guys that have really uh, kind of influenced what you do in particular? Well, you know, uh, I, I've spent a lot of time watching, you know, throughout the day. And, and that goes as deep as to watching all those uh, – the universities play, you know, Coach Krzyzewski get a lot of stuff from his. I mean, you can find videos on everything nowadays, and and those guys were just so good. Uh, uh, him, Coach Knight, all those guys, you can pick and choose all these different drills and stuff that they've created. And, you know, it's definitely – I definitely can kind of put my – put my twist on things, but it's all regurgitated from somewhere else. And, uh, I mean, you can – the YouTube and the internet's just, it's ridiculous. All the information that's out there. And I mean, you could have a, a good practice and not ever do the same thing twice if you wanted to, but, you know, just being a student of the game and trying to learn little tidbits here and there, basically by, you know, watch having the remote control on your hand in the weekend and, and just watching, I try to stay away from NBA games for sure. But, you know, the college game, I feel like, uh, you can learn a lot by watching those guys play. Coach, we know basketball's keeping you busy, but you still have off-season football stuff to to oversee. Does it make it a challenge, uh, more of a challenge to take care of that stuff? It does, but, you know, it, it helps when you have uh, coaches that are with you that, that are on the same page. You know, I've got a great, great group of guys here that kind of hold the fort down over there until I get back. And, uh, you know, that's been a blessing to have you know, Coach O'Shields and Coach Sego and all those guys that have kind of kind of been in the small school and, and seen how it works. Those guys are helping me endlessly over there. Uh, we've luckily we've always had a real good weight room guy here. Uh, Coach Arthur, Coach Munchauer, and now Coach Carpenter's running the weight room. So, you know, I've been blessed on that area to not really have to worry about that side of it while I'm doing basketball. But, you know, it's always good to, to run over there and see those guys every once in a while just to just to, to see their faces. And Coach, that kind of leads me a little bit into the next question just about overall program success. <laughs> you, you've built a, a state championship football program, a, a district championship basketball program. Y'all's baseball team uh, routinely makes deep runs. Your, your powerlifting team's been been great, obviously. Uh, and on the girls' side, uh, some some similar stories with, with uh, what the volleyball and softball programs have done. Just – how big of a point of pride is it for you to to look uh, and see the success, the, just the full, complete program success that, that Holly has had in, in recent years? Oh, you know, it's huge. You know, that's something we kind of always look at is the Lone Star Cup, you know, and and that's something that's kind of avoided us here. But we've been we've had a couple of top 10 finishes and, you know, it just makes you feel good. And, you know, the, you know, the kids are they're putting their whole self into that 
that stuff like that. And it really helps just the morale because we want to try to be good at everything. And, and just to see your success on paper sometimes is huge. And, you know, the best thing about small school is a lot of those kids that are leading the football team or leading the basketball team, all uh, a lot of those girls that are, uh, you know, leading the volleyball team or playing basketball. And then that runs over into softball. And it's just, it's just, it's good to have those girls and boys playing everything that they can and, and being a big part of what we do. And then uh, looking specifically at basketball uh, in the district y'all are in with Albany, Cisco, and, and some others, obviously, uh, just a, a really tough district with, with at the top, uh, some playoff type atmosphere, some playoff type competition. Just how much do you think uh, playing those types of games kind of help a team and, and help prepare a team for, for the postseason, for the playoffs? Oh, it helps, you know, especially, you know, we look at, uh, you know, coming down our schedule, we got we got to go to Cisco and to Albany. So we got to play at some a hostile environment and uh, stuff like that's going to definitely prepare you for for playing in the playoffs, you know, especially that that by district's always tough. And then that second round game when you're a one or two seed and you got to lace up the shoes and play Lipan or Toller or Poolville and a couple of those basketball schools, it, it makes it tough. So it's good to have a tough district. It kind of gets you prepared. Coach, tell us about Region 2. Uh, now, some people think that overall, as far as depth, Region 1 is maybe stronger than Region 2. But at the, at the end of the day, Lipan is still in there in, in Region 2. That's the top-ranked team in the state. Uh, tell us about Region 2 and how tough it is to get out of it. Oh, it, it's super tough. You know, first of all, our, our district, Snow Cake Walk, and then you look at the by district with Nakona, who, you know, was formerly 3A and – you know, you got uh, Archer City and Winthorpe and those guys that are always good. And then the second round, you're staring down the barrel of a lie pan. And Toller was really – Toller's who knocked us out last year, and they were they were great. And that's who lie pan played the same district, and they played in the regional championship. Uh, I don't I don't pay a whole lot of attention to Region 1. I got enough problems in Region 2. But uh, <laughs> it's uh, – I mean, there's – I've always thought that those dang basketball schools should have to be in a different classification just because they're playing since August. But, uh, you know, it makes a, it makes it tough on a football school. You know, Toler playing in that Lipan, I'd hate to be them playing in that Lipan district and and playing in the state championship. And then you walk in the gym Tuesday and you got to play a basketball school like Poolville or Lipan. So, you know, it's crazy. And with realignment, Grayford's going to probably join that that region too also and they're 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 tough as it can get uh, we sometimes uh we'll close with a king for a day question and we were going to do that today but and, and this is the first time somebody may have just answered their king for a day question in advance but i'm going to go ahead and ask it you may have just answered it <laughs> uh we're going to make you king for a day uh in in high school basketball and we'll let you make any change that you want to what that you want to make. If you were king for a day, what would you change in high school basketball? Oh, I would I would make a a two A Division three for straight basketball schools that that they can't play anybody that plays football. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what I would do with my king for the day. Well, coach, we appreciate your time. Uh, thank you. We know you're a busy guy. Uh, and for you to spend a few minutes with us is something that we appreciate a great deal. And well, we'll be I'm keeping an eye great. on Holly. Appreciate you guys. Yep. We'll we'll make sure to blend a photo of Eula over the top so that Coach Fostel's giving you a call after this one. <laughs> <laughs> Good deal. All righty, Coach. Thank we, you. We appreciate it. Thank you. And that was Holly, head basketball, head football, and athletic director extraordinaire Mitch Abels, who has really done, I mean – you know, as good a job as you could possibly do during his tenure. I mean, nobody's nobody's out outperformed him. It's just actually an incredible job he's done over there overall. Yeah, and I think ultimately it's it's uh, it's going to be seen as a legendary job what he's done there. I mean, I think he's going. Yes. We're going to look back, uh, you know, years and years from now at him the same way we would at Denny Faith at Albany. I mean, the program he's built at Holly, and not just football, like we talked about with him, but that just the all program success they've had at Holly, a place that before he got there was not necessarily known for its athletics, uh, just remarkable. And, and it's really cool to see what he's built there 
and that he's you know laid down some roots there and seeing his sons come through the program and, and them have success it's a really cool deal and it was a lot of fun having him on the on the show again well and really to appreciate the job that mitch has done at holly one has to look at holly's history and it really uh was very little history at all uh mm -hmm. as far as football is concerned especially uh very few winning seasons and i what i'm saying very few i mean very few Mm -hmm. like single digits it was it, yeah. it was bad it was very bad for a while and uh his his success there is just unprecedented it's not even it's really not even close to anybody who uh came before him uh some guys did a good job there with what they had and some may argue but yeah but you know way back in the day holly played at a higher classification but yeah that argument doesn't wash with me because guess what holly had a lot more kids back then and they still didn't win you know, they're yeah. playing their peers and they didn't, you know, they didn't do well. They're still playing their peers and now they're just doing an extraordinary job. So he gets full credit in my book. What's, what's really cool to me, too, is is seeing, I mean, the football, we've talked a ton about the football success over the years. Just seeing what he's doing with the basketball program. You've got a, a program in a tough district with with programs from Albany and Cisco that are really good, uh, consistently successful and uh, I mean, they're they're on a pace right now to to challenge for another district championship. So just re really uh, cool to see them building uh, and kind of climbing the ranks in that sport as well. Uh, and it was cool talking to him and hearing about uh, the the background of basketball with his dad coaching at that level or his dad coaching that sport and him really wanting to coach that sport. That's that's what the, probably what makes his football success even more, more impressive is that that was kind of a a secondary goal ultimately. But uh, really cool yeah. to see him get an opportunity to do what he's done. And it's been fun to watch. I, I, it's really cool to see what Holly's doing and uh, what he's done there. Yeah, well, uh, we're here. We are, we're talking about you know football now, but it, it, during basketball season. But just the, you know the fact that he has made so many radical changes, especially on the offensive side, to suit his personnel over the years, and he keeps finding a way to win. Yeah, you know he's got a different group of kids with a different talent set coming up, and he will adjust the offense sometimes radically. We've seen him. Yeah. I mean, uh, just a, uh, a straight running football team to, you know, wild freewheeling spread team. Uh, it, it's in something in the middle. It, it it just varies. And they always find a way to win, which is really impressive. And I think you're seeing some of that on the basketball uh, side, too. They lost a couple of really good scoring guards from last year's team. And now, like you said, they're playing maybe more of a defensive style. I think it's neat. It was kind of neat uh, getting into his head about some of the ways that he uh, – will use things he sees, uh, you know, just, just picks up on, on, on influences from, from coaches who've had success at other levels and just picks up on things and implements them what he's doing. And uh, I think that's the mark of a good coach, a guy who's willing to adapt and willing to change to the, to the talent that he's got and uh, is, is willing to, uh, you know, that it fits the players to the system, not the system to the players. So uh, really, really cool. With that, it's about time to close the books on this week's Big Country Preps Wednesday night podcast. But before we do that, we want to remind you, we've got three different subscription packages here at Big Country Preps. We've got a, a, a weekly for five bucks a month. We've got a semi-annual six-month subscription where we knock that price down to four bucks a month. And then we've got an annual 12-month subscription where we knock that price down to three bucks a month. And the yearly amounts to 36 bucks for a full year of Big Country High School athletic coverage. We'd also like to remind you that if you see a photo you like in any one of our galleries, those are available for purchase. We have photo downloads available for $7, as well as some keepsakes and prints, uh, so make sure you check those out. As you're scrolling through the site, you'll notice pretty quickly that we uh, take a lot of photos from these games we're at, and we try to be at a whole lot of games over the course of the school year. That is something that we are uh, really enjoy doing and something we are very proud of here at BigCountryPreps.com. All Big Country. All high school, all the time. Welcome home.